okay, okay. <laughs> Trying to call the house to order this morning. At least everybody online is sitting down waiting to hear my voice. Well, I don't know about my voice. I think really they're here to hear the, the uh, voice of the Lord, don't you? Hmm. They don't really want to hear this black country twang this morning. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the echo from the house was they do. <laughs> morning, everybody. It's amazing to see you all this morning. The rows are filling up. That's really exciting. There's, there's the, the gaps are getting less. Um, we've got new, we've got old, we've got young. We've got all sorts of people with us today. And I'm just really pleased you're here with us today. Yeah, very old. <laughs> Somebody claiming the very old badge. <laughs> Tony, Tony's got the very old badge. <laughs> Dear Lord, we just thank you this morning Bless that we are found in your house. Yes. I thank you that we're here. I thank you you're in our house. This house that we stand up in that speaks is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I thank you our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit when we are saved and we know you, Lord Jesus. You, Lord. When you, we realise that you're our saviour, our Lord and our deliverer, that you died for us on the cross and that you rose again Hallelujah. on the third day and that you were alive and seated by the side of your Father, ever interceding for us, ever interceding. And your desire is for all of us in this house this morning that we would all come to know you and accept your sacrifice that, and realise that we are sinners but saved by grace, Thank the you. grace of the cross, the grace of the journey of the cross Thank and you. the resurrection and the fact that you are coming back again, Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. that your promise is you will come back and, and we will just live with you forever. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, we just thank you this thank morning. You, we thank you this morning in Jesus' thank name. You, Amen. Um, last time I stood up here, I was challenging you, myself and you about suddenly moments. Do we remember those? Yeah. There's a few nods. Wow, people remember. Uh, I wonder how your suddenly moments went. Mine went okay. You know, they were okay. I could, I could list about four uh, 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 things that happened where God turned up. Uh, you know, suddenly praying with somebody uh, on a car park because they start pouring out the heart to me. For, for no reason. I've known them for some time and they're just in floods of tears. And that happened a couple of times with one person. I really felt God stepping into their life. Uh, and it's good really just to be alongside people sometimes and just to be able to hug and pray with them as a brother, even if they don't know Christ yet. Uh, and and, and that's, that, that was really good. Uh, bumping into people on our caravan site that uh, suddenly you realise no know somebody that used to come to this church and then have a conversation about church and the fact they've never crossed the line into faith. Uh, and yet I know that person will have been praying for the whole family non-stop. Uh, uh, and then you realise that God can work in such mysterious ways. There's a family that's been prayed for and suddenly this Andy Bates, he meets them in, in a site in Ludlow and they have a conversation and, and, and that's amazing, amazing, amazing. And we got a new one this morning, and I've asked him, and he said it was fine. We've got Will with us right in the middle there. <laughs> Welcome, Will. Uh, 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 <laughs> he even waves to the camera. Well done, Will. <laughs> and, and the reason why I pick on Will this morning, I'm not picking on Will, is because he said, the reason, I said, how come you're with us today, Will? He said, well, I, the buzz, he said, I was going to my Quaker meeting, but the buzz was late. <laughs> So I came here again. <laughs> Sue says, we'll have you. <laughs> so, so I came here. Why are you here? Well, I'll, I'll, I just want to come and worship. Hmm, I mean, but great. how suddenly is that like, you know, that somebody w walks in? But that's how God works. He works in such mysterious ways, doesn't he? You, so I just want to keep encouraging you suddenly moments, looking out. Because as I said to Will, like Will come in with his earphones and he picked up on it. We walk around like that, don't we? Is the camera following me? <laughs> we, we, we walk around like that with our earphones and oh, don't think, don't say it, uh, that trendy as you can tell uh, <laughs> in fact I was pointed out I wasn't very trendy this morning <laughs> but like so people walk around like that and, and, and you can miss the suddenly moments in your zone can't you uh, so let's just keep looking out for them this morning uh, I just want to bring before you some prayer requests we have got some people that really need our urgent prayers this week. The Nichols family, they're, they're really in the middle of it at the moment with Sue and Dave. 
Sue's got a hip operation on Thursday that she's uh, booked, uh, had done privately to try and make sure because she's been in so much pain and discomfort. So she's got that on Thursday. Dave's still struggling with his heart to find out what's going on with his heart. He's had an MRI. He was in that for 45 minutes. So it's quite a, a decent MRI. Uh, and uh, he's got an ultrasound as well in 10 days' time. So we're, we really need to lift, lift them up, the Nichols family up in prayer. Because uh, obviously Sue's going in hospital and Dave's still, he's on antibiotics again. Uh, but just still trying to find out what's, what's going on. We're just praying that it's, you know, something that will be resolved very quickly. Chris Pitt is also uh, really struggling. We know she's got lymphoma and she's had some more test results again. That isn't good, so she's got to go into the hospital. Uh, and her brother's um, also, he's got cancer, so that's another family that's really struggling that we need a, a suddenly moment in, don't we? Where God suddenly breaks in and, and, and they're healed and they're set free and they're delivered and they're restored. Um, uh, and obviously, uh, we've got the good old household. <laughs> it's so good to have Liz with us today. Yeah. How I've managed, I say this appropriately, to keep my hands off her and not give her a cuddle. Because you know what I'm like, don't you? <laughs> to, to, I, I, I do not know. It must be the Spirit of the Lord that's given me the strength. Because when I see that face, you know what, you just want to give her a big cuddle. <laughs> but it is, it's delightful to see her uh, this morning. So we just pray God and continue to totally restore you. Uh, and uh, for June Goodall, she's still, we still want a home. Uh, she's on a slow recovery, but it seems to have turned a corner and she's getting better. So let's just pray she gets uh, out of uh, and back to somewhere that, where she needs to be, whether it's a home or wherever it is, but it's part of God's plan. Uh, and then Steve also knows a guy in Israel, David Friedman, uh, who's one of the leaders uh, of a congregational church in Israel, and his wife, and they both had COVID. Um, it was quite serious, but his wife's now uh, recovering and not so bad, but David was in, in, in an induced coma, uh, and, it, and still is. Uh, and we're just praying that he comes out with no effects, uh, uh, really, of that. Uh, so would you just stand with me as we bring these people uh, to the Lord and we just pray. Father, we just thank you as we've heard this morning, you are a God of suddenly moments. You're also a God of gentle, timely moments, Lord. You don't necessarily have to come in with a big sledgehammer, but you can do that, but you can come in like a dove. And Father, for these situations that I've read uh, this morning, for the uh, Nichols household, for Chris Pitt, and for those uh, around the good all household, Father, yes. we ask you, uh, we bring them before you, and know, you, know you're the God who heals. I've felt it, I've experienced it myself, I've seen it, Lord. You are the God who heals. And Father, we claim that over these yeah. people. You are the God who heals. You are the God who restores. You are the God that delivers. Oh, and we just thank you and we worship you in yes. Jesus' name. Amen. I just want to, just before we're led into worship now by Steve, just challenge, ask you where you're living. I, I woke up this morning with, with the word shelter, cleft, under the wing. Where are you living? Where are you living today? Where do you expect to be living tomorrow? Psalm 91, we all know it. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my, yes. my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you yes. will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that destroys at midday a thousand may fall at your side ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you whoever dwells in the shadow of the oh, most yeah. high Amen. where are you living today Bless where are you, you choosing to dwell today I'd encourage you to just get with the Lord and dwell with him yeah. right now in worship dwell with him Thanks, Steve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh.
together, folks. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's declare that he's Lord of our lives. Let's declare that he's Lord over Sedgley. Let us declare that he's Lord over this country, this nation. Hallelujah, hallelujah. King of kings, Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we come to you this morning. And we pray, Lord, that you will just open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears, open our eyes, Lord, to see Jesus. Amen. To see our wonderful Savior, risen, exalted, and glorified in the heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Seated at the right hand Bless of the name. Father. Hallelujah. The job is done. Salvation has been purchased for us through the precious blood of our Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory Let's thank him, folks. Hallelujah. Give him praise this morning for all that he's done for us. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Lord, open our hearts. Lord, as Gaz comes and shares the words later, Lord, and we pray even by the, even now by the Holy Spirit, you start yeah. to prepare our hearts yeah. to receive your word. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just get lost in wonder, love, and praise to our King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Bye. 
Celestino. train fills the temple. And come. 
bow before you and proclaim you our Lord. Lord of our lives, Lord of our circumstances, Lord of our families, Lord of our relationships. Lord, as we heard last week, we carry the presence of God with us wherever we go because you are within us by the power and the renewal of your precious blood and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, and we bow down and we acknowledge you, the name above every name, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Please take your seats. It's always a pleasure when one of our own returns. And uh, it's wonderful to see Gaz. We call him Gaz. Posh people call him Gareth, but we call him Gaz. <laughs> You'll get me after, don't worry. <laughs> now, it's wonderful to have Gareth with us and, uh, and Sarah and the family. Isn't it wonderful to see the children and uh, some friends? Wonderful, wonderful to see you with us. And uh, I'm so pleased to see my old mate back. And I know that the Lord's going to really bless us with his ministry. He's, um, he's going to share God's word. He's going to tell us just a little bit about what he's up to and uh, share God's word with us. And then he's going to sing for us <laughs> before we finish. And I said to, uh, I said to Josh, so normally after the preach, we sort of, you know, we drop the live stream and we'll, we'll have a time of worship together and, and uh, do what family does and bless each other. And uh, I said, not today. I want everyone to hear Gaz sing. So, uh, so he's going uh, <laughs> to. So, so, <laughs> so you've got a lot to live up to now, mate. You've got a lot to live up to. But no, it's a real pleasure to have him back with us, isn't it? And I know there's uh, a number of folks here who don't know Gareth, so listen intently to what God's doing and has been doing through him and the team that he works for for a number of years now. And uh, bless the Lord, it's so good to have him back. So let's give him a really good, sagely welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Steve. You've not heard the song yet, so uh, <laughs> please reserve judgment. Well, good morning, uh, everyone. I wonder, as you logged on to the live stream, as you came here uh, to the building, I wonder, did you come expecting to hear from God? I wonder, as you came to connect with church today, I wonder, did you come to sit at the feet of of Jesus. Because he's here. He's here by his spirit and he, he wants to speak. He wants to speak to us. We're going to read uh, God's word together in just a moment. And I do just want to say uh, that this is not uh, a, a, a crusty old book. This is not just an ancient manuscript. This is powerful stuff. The Bible describes itself as uh, like a sword. Uh, that can cut right to our very heart. It describes itself uh, like sweet honey that can satisfy our soul. It describes itself uh, like a, a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, leading us, showing us the way forward in life. These are the oracles of God. This is his love letter to you and to me, and he wants to speak to us through his word this morning. And I wonder, will you open your heart to Jesus with me? 
Um, as C- Steve said, my name is uh, Gaz. Most people call me Gareth, but that's because they're all posh down, uh, down in London. And, uh, and uh, I'm here with my lovely family. So uh, uh, those of you who know me, as many familiar uh, faces out there, some new faces as well, which is really exciting. Uh, some of you will know my, my wife, Sarah, and uh, our little girl, Jemima, has been before. And this is Elijah's first visit. He's five months old. He's a lockdown baby, uh, which is exciting. And then delighted as well uh, to, be, to be joined uh, by my sister-in-law, Elizabeth, and our niece, Emily, as well. And, uh, and our family, we're, we're friends, longtime friends now of Sedgley Community Church and uh, very blessed. Uh, I, I, I used to come Sunday evenings down at the old building and uh, a real uh, blessed time uh, serving for, for a few years at least as, as the youth pastor here being part of the ministry team. Uh, I, I now have the privilege of, of serving with a ministry called K180. Um, if you wonder what that stands for, speak to me afterwards. Uh, but really what we're all about is uh, we're an evangelistic ministry charity. We're all about proclaiming the gospel and training others to do the same. Proclaiming and training. And uh, if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about that, we're, uh, I think in a couple of weeks' time, we're running an online uh, course, eight weeks, called Unashamed, uh, how to be more effective and how to be better equipped in sharing your faith with others. So you can have a look at that. Sign up on our website, k180.org, if you'd like to. Um, if you're online and you're, uh, you're browsing, uh, you could... Give us a cheeky like on Facebook if you fancy it as well. I've got, for those in the building, I've got a few, um, I brought a few newsletters with me, so do come and see me afterwards if you'd like uh, to, to receive one of those. And I just want to just say thank you to those who are part of the church family here who pray for us regularly. We really do appreciate um, uh, your prayers and know that, uh, that that's where the battle's won. There is, there is a, a spiritual battle going on. And as God's people pray, God answers prayer, doesn't he? So thank you for praying for us. Um, I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to read the scripture together. Father, we want to thank you for your word. We thank you that it is alive and active. And we simply want to pray, Lord Jesus, that you would come and uh, cleanse our hearts now, come and... Uh, that we might be able to hear from you, Lord, through your word. I pray you would help us to be obedient to your word as well, Lord. Wherever we find ourselves uh, this morning, come and guide us. Come and speak, Jesus. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible, uh, please do turn with me to Luke chapter 18. And we're going to read from verses 9 to 14. And uh, I'll be uh, reading these out uh, in the NIV is my translation here. And it's, uh, it's a parable. It's a story that Jesus told with a spiritual meaning. Um, and uh, we're introduced to two people uh, this morning. Let me read. To some who were confident in their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, and the other, a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed about himself. God I thank you that I am not like other men, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but he beat his breast and said, God Have mercy on me, a sinner. And I tell you, 
that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Amen. Amen. So this is a, this is a parable Jesus has told, and, uh, but it may well have been something that Jesus had seen or something similar that Jesus had seen when he went to worship at the temple in Jerusalem. Why does Jesus tell us this parable? Well, uh, Luke, who wrote this gospel, uh, he helpfully tells us in verse 9. He says, to some who were confident of their own righteousness and looked down on everybody else, Jesus told this parable. I wonder, are you confident of your own righteousness this morning? Do you look down on others this morning? You know, I think this passage can speak to all of us this morning because it speaks to different responses to God. It speaks to different prayers uh, that people pray. But my favorite thing about this story um, is that it centers on a single word, uh, justification, justification. I, I wonder how you would explain justification uh, to a friend who maybe didn't know what that meant. Uh, maybe you've not heard it all that often before. Uh, you might think it's a theological word. You might want to switch off. Stay with me here. It's not actually first a, a theological word. It is as well, but it's, it's a, a legal word. It's, uh, it's the, the language of the courtroom, justification. And we might use the phrase, oh, that person, such and such, uh, they feel like they have to justify themselves. Yeah, you might have heard that before. And uh, so it's, it's a concept that we're, we're very familiar with. Um, the word here means to give a, a reason for the decision that, that that person has made when we use it in that way. It's about giving an account. This guy over there on my street, he blew all the family savings on this fancy new convertible, and now he's got to go home and justify himself to his wife. Yeah, we might understand that. We might think he's a uh, a legend, or we might think he's a complete fool, uh, depending on your perspective. Yeah, but he's got, he's, got, he's got to justify himself. Why did I blow all the cash uh, on that convertible? Um, and uh, he's got to give a why to the what, okay? That's, that's kind of what, certainly one way of understanding justification, giving a why to the what. And did you know that one day, every single person watching online, every single person here in the building, we're going to have to give an account of our lives to Almighty God. You know, in a hundred years' time, you're not going to be watching the live stream. You're not going to be here in this room in Sedgley. Where are you going to be? The Bible says that every single person is going to have to stand before God in the judgment. This is the God who made you and the God who loves you. But we're going to have to stand before him and give a why to the what. I did these things in my life, God. I made these mistakes. I've got to give you a why now. And if today was your last day on planet Earth, say you got hit by the number one bus uh, this evening, and you stand before God in the judgment, what are you going to say to him? How are you going to justify what you've done, the way you've lived your life to a holy and perfect God. But justification means more than simply giving an account. Uh, the legal definition, you can look it up on Google, it's a, it's a little bit complicated. Um, so here's my simplified version. Uh, justification uh, also speaks, if, if the judge accepts a person's account, then that person becomes justified. They begin, become justified in the eyes of the law, and there is a legal change of status that happens. And that's what it means to be justified before God. 
There is a legal change of status. No longer am I a slave to fear. No longer am I condemned because of guilt and shame. But I'm justified by Jesus. And that's his offer to you this morning. That's his offer to each one of us. Come and receive pardon for sin. Come and be justified by grace. Let's come back to our passage together. We're introduced to two men, two people, and they have two very different prayers. But before I come on to the differences between these two, I want to start with the similarities. Because both of these men had breath in their lungs. Both of these men had a heart pumping blood through their veins. Both of these men had a unique DNA code stamped on every single cell in their body. Both of these men had messed up at different points in their life. Both of these men had broken the holy laws of God. And both of these men had come to the temple to worship. And as part of that, both of these guys pray to God. And incidentally, it tells us that they're standing while they're praying. Many similarities. But you see, the content and the substance of their prayers couldn't be more different. Night and day. Chalk and cheese, as we might say. So man number one, our first guy, Jesus tells us he was a Pharisee. Uh, That means he was a religious leader. He was honored in the community. He probably had fancy clothes. Um, he, uh, He was pretty special. And he was trying to keep all of God's laws. Um, He was trying to honor God. And so we might think, well, we've got to listen to this guy. This is a pretty special guy. What kind of prayer is he praying? What does he say to God? And what does he ask God for? Let's read this guy's uh, prayer. If you're following along with me, verses 11 and 12, he says, God, I thank you that I am not like Other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector over here. I fast twice a week, and I give a tenth of all that I get. You see, his prayer was all about himself. He doesn't actually ask God for anything. He doesn't doesn't do that. And he does the one thing that so many people in our nation do. They they justify themselves before God. Even those people who don't believe in God. Essentially, what this, this guy is saying is he's saying, well, God, I'm a good person. Well, even if I'm not a good person, I'm better than these people. And he lists the type of people he's looking down on. He says, actually, I'm better than them. And you know, I've, I've met uh, many people on the streets. We do outreach evangelism, uh, preaching and testimony and music on the streets. And I met a lot of people and had the privilege of sharing the gospel with many uh, over the last several years. And I often encounter this kind of attitude. Maybe it's actually the kind of attitude that you feel about life. God, I'm a pretty good person and I'll probably actually make it to heaven. Besides, I've never murdered anyone. Have you ever heard that? I've heard that many times. Besides, I've never murdered anyone. But since when did not murdering someone become, that's kind of the level for goodness here? That's kind of, that's how you get into heaven? Just don't murder anyone. Here's a piece of truth for you. You will always find someone who is worse than you. You will always find someone you can compare yourself to and go, actually, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. And the temptation for us as human beings is to have this attitude of the Pharisee. God, I'm not like those people. Whoever you choose to look down on, you can take your pick. I'm not like those people. 
And do you know what? Because of that, I'm probably just about good enough to get into heaven. And the Pharisee carries on. He doesn't stop there. He lists off all the nice religious things that he does for, does for God. God, I did these amazing things well, so you'll love me even more. He tells us, I fast twice a week, God. I give a tenth. I tithe. I give 10% of my money, uh, of all that I get, actually, not just money. Thank you, God, that I gave that money to charity. Do you remember that, God? Thank you, God. Remember how that time I gave that gift to that person without wanting anything back. Remember that one time that I bought a big issue. Do you remember, God, that the time that I gave that food to the food bank? Remember it. Remember all those good works, Jesus. You see, this man's justification is in the good works that he is doing. And it's a misplaced justification. His justification is in his religion, his outward uh, rituals. And even though this story was told 2,000 years ago, Jesus is speaking here about countless individuals up and down our nation. The religious and the non-religious. He's also talking about people who are are sat in churches uh, in in many cities uh, across the UK. And he may be talking about you this morning. Where is your justification? And then we're introduced to the second guy, man number two. Jesus tells us he was a tax collector. So just just as an aside, not a very nice guy in society. Most people look down on him. In fact, we saw that in the Pharisee. I'm glad I'm not like him. And he's also standing to pray. He's there in the temple, but he stands at a distance. He steps back. Maybe he doesn't feel worthy to be at the center where where people are doing the praying. Maybe he doesn't feel good enough. Maybe he doesn't feel religious enough. Well, the good news this morning is that you will never be good enough for God. And he's not asking you to earn a place in heaven by your goodness. So stop trying to earn his favor. You know, you'll never be religious enough for God. And, and, and God hates outward religion. He cares about the heart. W- where is your heart? He wants it. You know, the tax collector doesn't even lift his eyes to heaven, Jesus tells us. He, he, he bows his head in God's presence and, and he beats his breast. That was a, a, a first century Jewish cultural thing that just meant he was sorrowful. He was ashamed of his sins. And then he prays a really short prayer. Uh, verse 13, if you follow along with me, he says, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Well, hang on a sec, Gareth. Is that all he prays? Surely you should have had some elaborate prayer going on. Nope. God wasn't interested in his fancy religious words, was he? God was interested in his heart. And that short prayer is the kind of prayer that God loves to answer. Does he ask God for anything? Absolutely. He asks him for mercy. He says, God have mercy on me, a sinner. I wonder, have you ever prayed a prayer like that before? Have you ever asked God for his mercy? Have you ever told him that you're a sinner and you need his forgiveness? If you haven't before, you, you prepare to do that because he's here. He's knocking at the door of your heart and he's saying, I'm going to freely forgive. I'm going to justify you. If you come by faith, I will do that for you. But you see, each one of us has a problem. It, it's, a, it's an old-fashioned word, a word the Bible uses called sin. And, uh, and, and sin is when we break God's laws. And, and some of those, the Pharisee lists there, uh, adultery and, and, and cheating people and, and stealing things. Um, but actually, when Jesus was asked to What was the most important commandment? What's the one commandment I should never break? Because it's it's like the golden one. He said, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And yet, actually, that's the one I find 
many of us can break even daily. We don't love him as we should. And so actually, if that was the one I should never break, how much do I need a savior? How much do you need a savior? You know, the Bible says that all have sinned. All of us are in the same boat and fall short of the glory of God. And for all the good people out there, if you think you're a good person, look at Jesus' bar. He says no one's good except God alone. What does he mean? No one is good except the holy and pure God who made you. So where does that leave us? Well, the Bible says that the, the wages or the payment of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. In other words, sin is going to lead to death. And that's a, a spiritual death now. That's sometimes why we feel a, a, a real emptiness. That's sometimes why we feel uh, like our prayers hit the ceiling. That's a spiritual death now. That's a physical death on the day we die. And that's an eternal death in a place that Jesus described as a place of weeping. A place the Bible calls hell. Separated from God eternally. In other words, there's absolutely no way that we can justify ourselves before God. We're way past that now. Whether we've broken one of God's laws or whether we've broken a hundred, each of us needs a savior. Imagine with me that your life is a boat and, and you're, you're on the sea and it's storming and, and the wind uh, is howling, the rain is beating down, but it's okay. You've got an anchor, and you let the anchor down. The anchor is holding you firm and secure. And it's got a chain that's connecting you with the anchor. I wonder, how many of the chain links would I have to break before you're cut loose from the anchor? Just the one. Just the one, and it's the same with God. You know, we only have to break one of his laws, and and we, we need a savior. So we need someone to come and rescue us, to bring us back to God. We need to be justified. And we can't do this on our own, so we need a justifier. How serious is sin to God? Well, um, this week, uh, I was with a group of friends, and we did a four-day prayer walk uh, across London. We started all the way out in the east in Kent, and uh, we finished up uh, on Friday, just gone, uh, in West London, in Ealing, uh, where I live. And we walked for four days. And we weren't just walking for the sake of it. We were walking and praying. We were praying for the city of London. We were praying for the churches. We were praying uh, for the people. And um, we were walking on uh, one of the days, I think day two, between Canary Wharf, where they have all the, the, the big high-rise buildings, and uh, Tower Bridge, and uh, we were somewhere in the middle there, and I saw a, a, a building uh, area where, 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 they were, where they were doing some work. And uh, they had a little sign on there telling, them, telling me what, what they were doing. And, uh, and I began to, to read. It turns out, I must have missed this in the news, they're building a tunnel under London. And it's not for, uh, for, for Crossrail or, or any anything like that. They're building a sewage tunnel. Why? Because uh, there are certain times of the year where the sewage in London gets so bad, and when they have heavy rainfall, the sewage backs up and it gets into the river. And so I have a question. How serious is sewage to Thames water, uh, sewage getting into the river? How serious is that to them? Well, I, I read, and it, and it tells me uh, that they are, are spending uh, about uh, eight years building this tunnel due to open in 2025. And it was serious enough for them to be bothered to build a 16-mile tunnel under the river at the cost of 4.2 billion pounds. That's how serious it was. And if I ask you the question, how serious is sin to a holy and perfect God... You know, he didn't bother with a 16-mile tunnel. He didn't bother uh, and leave it just at 4.2 billion pounds. But he sent his son to the cross. That was how serious sin is to God. His blood was poured out for sinners there. That's how serious. 
The Bible says this, speaking of Jesus, it says he was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Justification. And this is uh, where the death and resurrection of Jesus, the justifier, comes in. You see, God loves you. And if you forget everything else I, I say this morning, remember that, that God loves you. And he loved you enough to not just let his love be words, but he, he demonstrated that love. In fact, the Bible says that he loved the world so much. He loved you so much that he gave. He gave a gift. His one and only son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That whoever believes in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. You see, Jesus stepped down from heaven, leaving his glory behind. He was born in a stinky stable. He lived a poor man's life with no place to call his home. He didn't even have a house. He lived the perfect life without sin that you and I could never live. And then he laid it down. He gave it up as he was nailed to that brutal cross. He was mocked. He was beaten. He was spat upon. A crown of thorns was thrust upon his head. He had his beard pulled out. And he had nails the size of pens driven through his wrists and through his feet. Why? Why did he bother? You know, if we could have got to God by our own goodness, Jesus would never have had to have bothered. But why did he do it? To justify you. To justify me. He took our place. You know, they put him in a tomb. It wasn't even his own tomb. He had to borrow that. He didn't need it for long. Because on the third day, God raised his son to life. So that you and I could be reconciled back to God, our Father. And this is good news. This is the hope for the world. How does it make you feel? How does it make you feel? I wonder, do you have peace in your heart with God this morning? Or are you still on the run? Have you been justified by His grace through faith? Or are you still trying to pay for your sins yourself? And we must come to God God's way. And that is by the way of the cross. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life that no one comes to the Father except by me. We need to come in humility. Just like the, the tax collector. We've got to come in humility and in repentance that was his prayer. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And repentance just means asking for forgiveness. And it means turning. That's what the word literally means. It means turning from my way to God's way. From hopelessness to hope. From death to life. You prepare to come today. Jesus tells us. That only one of those two men went home justified that day. Only one of them. And I'll let you into a secret. It wasn't the fancy religious man. It was the one who asked for mercy. It was the humble, repentant man. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled. And those who humble themselves will be exalted. You know, one day my life will come to an end. I don't know whether that will be in two years, 20 years, 40 years. I don't know. And when God looks at the what of my life, when I stand before the Lord God in his glory and in his holiness, Steve was speaking about that earlier, holy, holy, the train of his Rome fills the temple, and I'm in awe of God and I stand there, and I, he looks at the what. You know what? I'm not going to come up with some half-baked story about, hey, God, well, I did those things because of, of this. I'm not going to give him my excuses. I'm going to say to God, there is no excuse. In fact, there's no reason why you should ever forgive me for the things that I've done. In fact, I deserve 
condemnation. But the only case I plead for my justification, God, is Jesus. And his blood that was poured out for me. His body that was broken for me. And when God turns and looks upon his son, the Lord Jesus, uh, and he looks upon the Lamb of God who was slain, who takes away the sin of the world, God the Father will say it's enough. It is finished. It's enough. You have been justified in my sight. There has been a legal change of status. Not because of your goodness, but because of the goodness of Jesus. And as I conclude, I just, I just throw this challenge out to you. Who are you trusting in? What case are you going to plead before God? Is it your own case? Is it your own justification or is it the justification of the shed blood of Jesus Christ in your place. And as we come to the end of the message this morning, I really want to give an opportunity for you to make it right with God today. Whether you're watching online on this live stream, whether you're here in the room, God is speaking and he's drawing you. In fact, Jesus said, no one can come to the Father except if he's drawn, if my Father draws him. And so if you hear his voice today, don't delay. Don't harden your heart, but come. But come. Did you know you, you may never hear his voice as loudly as you hear it today? If you don't have peace with God, today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time a promise from the scripture for you as I conclude. The Bible says that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It's not might be saved. It's not if, if Jesus takes you 70% of the way and you, and you top it up by being a good person, by doing good, good works and religious things. No, that's not what it says. It doesn't say everyone who is religious enough will be saved. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that's his promise for you and for me today. What stops you? What stops you from saying yes to Jesus? I'm going to lead us in a short prayer now. And I wonder if we could do just what the tax collector did. If you're able to, why don't we stand together? Jesus tells us that they were standing as they prayed. So let's just stand as a, as, a, as a physical expression, if you're able to. If you're not able to, maybe you just raise a hand. It's just a physical expression of our response to God. And I particularly want to, to speak to those who, who have never made that commitment to follow Jesus, who, who don't know peace in your heart with God, who don't know if today was it don't know if they would be with him forever in heaven. You know, God wants you to know. He wanted you to know enough to send his son to that cross. And so I'm going to pray a short prayer. I'm going to give an opportunity for you to pray this yourself, just in the quiet of your heart. Let's pray, and you make this your prayer. God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner, and I need your forgiveness. Jesus, I believe you died and rose again for my justification. I turn now from my sins. Come and be my Lord and my King. Help me to live for you. I give you my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just take a seat.
You know, if you prayed that prayer today and you meant it, God has heard your prayer. And Jesus said that when, uh, when one sinner who repents, when someone who says, Jesus, I need you to justify me, he says that there's a party in heaven. All the angels are rejoicing. So if you prayed that prayer and meant it, God is celebrating with you. There's a party going on. And if you prayed that for the first time or the 71st time, if you've come back to God uh, today, please tell someone. And uh, online you can do that by leaving a comment uh, on, on the live stream or you can send a direct message to the church. If you're here in the building, come and speak to me afterwards. Come and speak with someone that you came with. Uh, we'd love to uh, encourage you. We'd love to pray for you. Uh, we'd love to cheer you on in your new relationship with Jesus. And we'd love to give you a Bible if you don't have one. So please uh, do connect and tell someone. Um, I'm going to conclude now with um, a song. And um, it's a song that, speaking of a lockdown baby, this is a lockdown song. Um, so you won't have heard it before. It's based on uh, a beautiful Psalm, Psalm 73, which uh, I won't read the whole psalm. Uh, you can do that later. But there's, there's a couple of verses in, in the middle of that. And it says, um, though my heart and flesh may fail, yet God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. God is the strength of my heart. And that's what the song's called. God is the strength of my heart. It's really a testimony to the faithfulness of God. So I hope this, uh, this blesses you. Thank you. Truly you've been good to me, been faithful every hour. My provider, prince of peace, my refuge, my high tower. You were there to carry me when I had lost my way. Though my sins were scarlet, you washed them all away. Whom have I in heaven but you? There's nothing else on earth I desire. Though my body fades away, I only see in part. God is the strength of my heart. Great the price you paid for me, the price to bring me home. You endured the cross for me, giving up your throne. On the third day, like you said, you rose in victory. Heaven's gates are open wide, my eyes at last shall see. Whom have I? In heaven but you, there's nothing else on earth I desire. Though my body fades away, I only see in part. God is the strength of my heart. Up from the grave you arose, the power of death is overthrown. You broke the curse of sin so I can sing hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah to the King Jesus Though my 
my body fades away, I only see in part. God is the strength of my, God is the strength of my, God is the strength of my heart. Wonderful. Let's uh, let's just pray for Gareth and for Sarah and the and the children. Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for this family. Lord, I thank you for Gareth. I thank you for the passion that you've given to him to share your word and your gospel to whoever will hear. Lord, that's a commission that you've given to us to share your love and grace to everyone that we meet. And Lord, I just thank you for Gareth, for Sarah, for the the wonderful children that they've got and the family that they have around them. Lord, I pray your blessing will just be upon them now. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you just bear fruit in Gareth's ministry. Lord, that he'll meet and share the gospel with so many people in so many countries. Lord, as uh, things start to open up again, he'll be able to share back into Europe again and around London. Lord, use him mightily for your purposes, we pray. In your precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Gareth. Fantastic. Wonderful. Let's give him another... Let's give the Lord the praise. Hallelujah. And I would, uh, I would say that if you're online, we, we've carried the, the live stream on today. Um, if you're online and you want to know more about this Jesus, we've introduced you to our Jesus today, our Savior and our King. If you'd like to know more, then uh, look on our Facebook page and our website. The email is there. Email us. Or put a message on the uh, live stream and we will get in touch with you and we've got literature for you. We'll pray with you and uh, just just get in touch with us. Let's just introduce you to our wonderful Saviour. We've just got a few, um, a few um, messages really. Uh, Pastor Steve uh, sent me a message at 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know what he was doing. <laughs> Um, saying he was off the Cornish coast. I hope he was still on the boat. <laughs> I hope they hadn't done a Jonah and thrown him overboard. <laughs> uh, I didn't hear of any storms then on the, off the Cornish coast, so I think we'll be okay. But uh, Pastor Steve, they should be docking into, I think, Southampton any time now. Um, and so the Hyde family will be on their way back today. Uh, so uh, <laughs> back to the West Midlands fairly soon. And it'd be great to have you back. I pray that the Lord's... Uh, he sent me these texts yesterday and I said, look, you're on holiday. Pack it in. Just enjoy your holiday. You know, so uh, we can talk about all these things afterwards. Enjoy your holiday because he deserves it. He's a great pastor and we love him. Um, but uh, a few things he's asked me to share and also um, the online alpha uh, will start on the 23rd of September um, encourage folks to sign up um, and as we've said you know if, if you uh, invite somebody to join uh, join up with them and do it together uh, don't just leave people to their own devices but jo- encourage people to sign up and say look I'll sign with you and we'll do it together along with everybody else so um, that's on the 23rd start on the 23rd so sign up for it if you want to join it and invite your friends Um, we are meeting again um, 
uh, we have got various things going on online. Uh, first of all, the, the Just Jesus studies are continuing every week. Make sure you get your notes as you leave. Um, but also uh, in the church building on Friday, 1.30, isn't it? 1.30, we're, uh, 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 we're meeting uh, to pray. So uh, as many as are able, uh, we pray for an hour on a Friday, uh, early Friday afternoon. So uh, please join us for that. Um, and the one thing that is a bit different to what we've done so far is that uh, the toddlers are back in the building this week. And so Steve uh, asked us whether we, just a few of us, can just pick a few chairs up each and deposit them up that corner and we'll get all the chairs out so they've got the space for the children and for the other youth activities that are restarting in the building during the week. All the chairs will be back for, ready for you for next week. Don't worry, everything will be fine. But if you could, um, if you could help us just for a few moments just to um, stack everything away. Okay, I think that's... That's a lot. Let's just stand together as we, uh, as we bless each other and I'll bless you as we go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his shalom. In the name of Jesus, our Lord, our King, and our wonderful Messiah. Amen. Amen. Have a good week. Bless the Lord. Bless others as you go out. And we'll see you next week.